Hey, welcome. Today our goal is to talk through how an analog wave gets converted into a digital wave. This is also called pulse code modulation. So for instance, if you have sound waves, they can be converted into an analog wave through a microphone. I've done a screencast on exactly that. But once this analog wave is created, how is it converted into a digital format? So that's what we're going to be talking about today because computers work with digital bits. They work with ones and zeros for their base level of programming and they're very good at it. But the question is how do we get from an analog wave into digital information? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so first of all, there are a couple terms here that we need to talk about. So ADCs and DACs stand for analog to digital converters or digital to analog converters, and they are integrated circuits. Usually if you're talking about something with sound, like a microphone, this is on a sound card in a computer, for instance. And you could say, well, what is an integrated circuit? So an integrated circuit is going to be a bunch of electronic circuits that have been designed very well to work as a set and then they can get put onto a semiconductor like silicon and integrate with the rest of the device. And these things are some of the foundations of all of our electronics. So everything that is related to computers, cell phones, almost any kind of technology you can think of is using integrated circuits these days. And it's using them to process digital bits, digital bits of information, ones or zeros. So let's go ahead and talk more about what a digital bit is. So a digital bit is a fundamental unit of information. So the word itself, bit, comes from binary digit. Binary meaning one of two options. So we typically represent this as either a one or a zero, or you have a significant voltage or you don't have a significant voltage. So the ones and zeros can represent different physical states, but once they are converted into ones and zeros, computers can efficiently work with them. All right, so let's think more deeply about how a computer uses an analog wave and converts it into a digital wave. So throughout this process, I'm gonna summarize it with this up here saying that we're going to start with sampling go through quantizing and end up in encoding. That's the overall process that we're talking about today. So you could say, well, what's sampling? Sampling is going to be taking measurements at regular X intervals. So you could say a sampling rate is how many measurements you take per unit time. And so you can see this would be our analog wave right here. Our samples would be the values that you would get at these different y-axis values, you could say. There's a little more to it, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. But generally speaking, the higher the sampling rate, the more we could break this down. So if you look at this and imagine that your sampling rate was doubled from this image right here, what that would mean is we would have double the number of these purple lines. Well, if you had double the number of the purple lines, you would have double the number of these blue dots. And you would more closely approximate what this wave actually is with more frequent sampling. But you would also increase the amount of data that you're dealing with. So there's a trade-off between very high sampling rates and the extra data that's picked up as a result of that. All right. Well, it turns out that there's a little more to it, like I said. We don't just put any number for these y values right here. We are going to round off to the nearest value that we are working with. So if you take a look at this red line right here, this red analog wave, it's being represented by these blue dots. So we've got sampling going on in the x every so often, every regular unit of time, you could say. Then our y values, you're actually going to have a close approximation to these values. So if we take a look at, say, this red line right here, this blue dot is pretty close to this red line right here, but it's not exactly on the red line. And that's because we're quantizing the data. So we're going to round off the analog value to a specific number. And that's what we mean by quantizing. We're going to make each sample match one specific horizontal line, so a y-axis value. So if we can get full numbers here, here you've got a range between 0 and 15. So you've got a range of 16 different values that the amplitude could register as. And it won't be perfect, but it'll be close enough to work with. All right, and the name for this is called pulse code modulation. This is where we're going to represent analog waves, like this red wave, in digital bits of information, like the blue dots. 
we're essentially sampling every so often and then based on that we're finding the amplitude of the wave at that point and rounding it off to the nearest quantized value. Now I do want to mention that's how close you get with the digital data compared to the actual wave depends on two things. The sample rate, that means how often you take a sample. If we take a sample like 10 times a second, you'll get a much better representation of the true wave than you would say one sample a second, right? So that's the sample rate. The higher the sample rate, the closer the digital data is going to be to the true value of the analog wave. All right, the next idea though is bit depth how granulated or how many quantum levels you have to deal with. In this image here, you've got 16, but you can imagine more or less, and that would mean that this digital data, the blue dots right here, would be more closely or less aligned with the true analog wave value. Let me show you what I'm talking about for this. So first of all, if you have a two-bit depth, so that's what we mean by bit depth, we are working with two bits of information, and there are four logical options that this can have and so because we're dealing with binary information each bit has two possible states that means you can have four logical options over here you can have a one 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 zero zero one and zero zero as your four logical options and each of them correspond to a different amplitude on this wave so we've quantized the wave it's a little hard to see these light blue lines with the dots but we have rounded off the red analog wave to the digital value here we're going to build on this idea. For a 3-bit depth, what we're saying is we're going to use three ones or zeros to describe the amplitude height of this wave. So based on this, we actually have eight different logical possibilities that we could have for the binary code. And so for using three bits to describe the amplitude of the wave, you can see that you get better data as a result of this. You also get more data. Notice, for instance, you have a height difference here that isn't really Really noted with these two blue dots right here because the bit depth or bit resolution is just not good enough in the two bit depth to be able to see that red wave with the positive slope right here. Here it's better represented because we've got a better bit depth or bit resolution. And on the right, you can see we've got four bits that represents these data points that represent the amplitude or the quantized state for the digital data representing the analog wave. And you can just see visually that you're going to get a lot better data because of the bit depth or bit resolution that we're working with is much greater. So there are 16 different binary states that you can have for a wave that's represented with a four bit depth. And I do want to emphasize that over here, these values that you have are going to be encoded in binary. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about binary, but you can kind of visually see how your lowest state in the amplitude will correspond to your zeros for your binary state and your greatest will be all ones. And then you'll have different patterns and different combinations of things as you go from the bottom to top. And an easy way to see greater bit depth and the effects, notice if we have one bit color depth, that means the image has been quantized such that it's either there or it's not. It's either purple or it's black. And that's all you have with a one bit color depth because you're either a one or a zero for all of these pixels in here. And as you get higher and higher color bit depth, you can see more and more true colors of what's going on here. And if you're dealing with a 24 bit color depth, that's over 16.7 million color values that you could have if you're working with a digital camera. So thank you for listening. I'm covering all of the major ideas for a physics course all throughout the year. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.